Good morning, church. It is great to see everyone today. Thank you for being here. You guys got treated to, I think, three opening videos because we had to get started, but that just means we're ready for church. So thank you for joining us, and let's just praise God today. Amen. <laughs> All right. I'm going to need your help today. So let's stand up to worship the Lord. And on this first hand, first song, I need your help clapping to keep the beat because uh, our hands are all on instruments. So go ahead, Nick. All right, let's repeat after me. Let's try this out. Let everything, let everything that hath breath, that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come praise the Lord. Come praise the Lord. Time. Let everything, let everything that hath breath, that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come praise the Lord. Come praise the Lord. Lord. in the valley.
All right, that was great, you guys.
Sometimes when we're worshiping, I don't know, sometimes how, how God talks to everyone here. Um, sometimes I get like pictures that God just is, gives me to, to show something that's happening and what he wants me to pray. Sometimes it's to share. And this morning I just feel that um, the Holy Spirit is, is, has a word for somebody here, some buddies here. Um, as we were singing, I will make room for you. Um, I was just praying, Lord, for everyone that's gathered here today that, you know, God, you just work in our lives to tell us what you want to tell us, show us, to take us closer to your heart. But it was like I saw this picture, and I don't know how many of you have ever been in a, a dusty, crowded attic where a lot of things are piled up. But uh, sometimes over the years, they get really messy. I have a room in my basement right now. It's not an attic, but a lot of things have been piled in there. There's a lot of treasures in there, but they've been piled up. And there's boxes of things that I need to tend to. And when I go into that room, I usually have to move something aside. And God was just showing me this picture this morning of, of how his Holy Spirit is working in our lives. And sometimes as the Spirit is working, it's like... It's so cluttered up. There's a whole lot of obstacles where we're guarding our heart. And his spirit is working his way to our heart to, to touch our lives, to strengthen us, to pour into us what we need. And, and there's all this stuff in the way. And it's like the, in the picture, it was like someone in a room pushing everything out of the way just to get to the most important thing in the room, the, the treasure of our heart. And God said, Debbie, that's some, sometimes that's what my spirit is working to do. There's so many obstacles that keep me from the heart. And if you're here this morning and you just feel like I could be you, that there's these obstacles that are guarding your heart, that are pushed up a wall where your heart is hidden. 
God is saying, let me in. Let me in. Push, push those things out of the way so I can come to your heart. Make room. Make room for me today. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to.
So, Father, we just, we pray today and just dedicate this service to you, Lord. We want your will done. We want each and every heart here today to just know that they're loved by you, Jesus. Thank you for covering, covering our sins with your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that that treasure is worth selling everything we own obtain it because we know there's more there's more waiting for us there's more than this this broken world around us Lord. so thank you for all that you do for us in your name amen uh, can you guys take a minute to just uh, say hello to each other I know it's a packed room today but uh, but we can do it All right, guys, I'll get you guys back in your seats.
All right, so yeah, if you're new today, you can tell we're a, a very active, lively church. Uh, we just love to take time to make sure that we uh, say hi to each other, which usually creates a bit of chaos trying to get it started again. But it's a good problem we, to have. We we love this. We love this mix. So. Um, if you are new today, uh, we want to ask you to fill out one of the cards in front of you. If you'd like us to contact you or you want more information about the church or anything, feel free to, to fill that out. We're going to start with a couple announcements today. Uh, so it is September, which means everything is going to be starting up again. So there's going to be a, a number of announcements that you're going to want to pay attention to so you can be aware of the dates. So our first one is our children's program and youth gym night. So that's going to be starting up again Wednesdays. There's no actual date on there. <laughs> September 20. So starting September 20, we're going to be, so it's in a few weeks here, but we're going to be starting at 615 at the International Culture Center, which is the old Macaulay School. Uh, the kids' uh, Sunday programs will be starting again here possibly next week or for sure the week after. So we're still working out on that one, but that's going to be starting up again as well. Uh, fall clothing needs. We are looking for socks, underwear, blankets, and men's pants, usually around the size 30 to 32 kind of area. So those are some of the needs that we're looking for. We give out a lot of clothing here at the church. Our drop-in program is actually starting again October 3rd, which is coming up in one month from today. So, so the more we can get, uh, the more we can get and started now that we're so we're ready for when we start again it'd be a big help so if you have any of those things that you have laying around uh please please bring them in we'll take them uh i think there is prayer and worship night this month at the end of the month starting at uh september 24 5 o'clock p.m here at the church so we have sunday morning and then we do a prayer and worship night afterwards which is always a good time i think that's it for all my announcements so i'm going to invite pastor debbie up There's a lot of birthdays. I can't forget this. I have to pull up my list for this. No, I had a, I had a date. <laughs> All right. So, birthdays. Um, I'm going to invite up. Let's see. We got Mark. Mark, you're going to come on up. We're going to pray for you today. And we have normally not to now. She's not here, so I might hold off on her. But we're still going to pray for Michael and Nicole, Ali and Lucy, <laughs> Richard, and and Thomas. So we got a number of birthdays to pray. At the same time, we have a few people that are uh, just suffering from illness right now. Uh, always September brings illness season, so we want to just cover our whole church, but particularly those that we know that are suffering right now which is uh, Sheldon and Anne and Sharon and Senno, and we want to cover Fiona as well. So let's pray. Uh, sorry, I'm going to invite family and friends to come around, Mark. I love being part of a lively church. It's great. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this church congregation. And thank you for the ways that we get to just come and love on each other and just show our support for one another. So we just lift up Mark to you today and just thank you for uh, the ways that you are with Mark, that you uh, remind him that he is uh, beloved by you, Lord, that you have a plan for his life and a purpose for his life. Help him stay strong when he needs strength, Lord, knowing that he can rely on you. Thank you for all the ways that you provide for him, and we just continue to bless Mark, and thank you that he's part of this church family. Lord, we want to pray for Richard, who I know is watching right now. We just bless him, and thank you for Richard and the ways that uh, he's working as a husband and uh, as a man of God behind the scenes. So just bless him at work. Bless him with your words and authority in his life, Lord, and just thank you for the ways that I know Richard uh, has given himself to you. Lord, we lift up Ellie and Lucy, and thank you for uh, just that amazing set of twins, Lord, and just pray blessings over them today, and just thank you that uh, they get to be part of our children's ministry and just the, the, the brightness that they bring with them. May you just cover them this week, and thank you for all that you, they are. 
We pray for Michael and Nicole, Lord, and just thank you for those two, and just ask a blessing over the whole family that you just watch over and watch over Nicole as she drives home today, and just thank you that uh, I know that you're active in their life, that you love them, and that you are with them always. And Lord, we just pray over Sheldon and Sharon, Sano, and Fiona, and all those that are just covering with the illness today. We pray a blessing that you just keep them from um, illness, Lord, that you help them through the illness they currently have. And just pray over our whole congregation that in this sickness season, Lord, uh, that we just stay healthy and look to you for our help and guidance. We pray over our offering and continue to ask that the, the finances here be used to see your kingdom come and to see souls saved. In your name, Jesus, amen. amen. Happy birthday to you. Uh, I have a couple things to add, and I will, um, well, I get the happy tidings, so uh, Ashley's got a couple pictures, Kathy, or Ashley, can we go to the baby first? There we go. We have a new baby in Father's house to welcome. Uh, Bruce and Fiona are welcoming Samu, and as you can see, I snuck to the hospital yesterday and have a little little selfie with the baby, which I couldn't resist. And, but I did have permission to share this picture of the, our baby, who I, just so you know, you'll hear me calling him Sammy. I have permission to call him Sammy. And uh, really excited to welcome a tiny new baby here. Yes, yes, yes. One person did their part. Uh, not now, Leslie. <laughs> uh, uh, we're we're going to be starting, when the children start gym night, I'm excited to be starting a new Bible study coming up on, uh, uh, no, September 20. September 20, that's the day. That's my wedding anniversary. I don't get the night off? No. Speaking of anniversaries, wait, where is the happy couple? Where is the wife of the couple? She ran away. Colleen, now you're gone. Oh, oh, you, you have your mom chaperoning? We need to have a talk. That's not how you celebrate an anniversary with your mom in the middle. Supposed to be cuddling in the pew. Today is RJ and Colleen's 23rd wedding anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a, that's a great reason to celebrate. Uh, Bible study. We have a quick little video to show you, just a little introduction to what we're going to be studying um, for the first five weeks this fall. Shalom, I'm Rabbi Jason Sobel. Did you ever wonder why the first miracle Jesus did was the water into wine? What it means to be born again from a Jewish perspective? Why Jesus had to die on the cross? Or why there were 153 fish in the great miraculous catch in John 21? We're gonna explore all this and so much more to look at it in high definition from a Jewish perspective in our new Bible study, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. So I've already got to watch a little bit of the first session, and um, I'm excited to uh, be studying Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. So um, Wednesday night, join us coming up on September 20th. Uh, I have another announcement. What is it? Children. That's it. Um, another quick video that we're going to uh, watch, and then I'm going to invite everyone, children, youth, young adults, other not-so-young adults, everyone getting back to school this fall, we're going to get you to come, and we want to pray over you. So let's watch this video and then be ready to come, and we're going to pray, okay? Today, Lord, we pray for our children as they leave summer behind 
and begin another school year. We pray the word of God over each one of them. Over all their steps, may you be a lamp for their feet and a light for their path. Over all their friendships, may they choose their friends wisely and may their friends refresh their souls. Over all their challenges, may they remember you are in their midst, the mighty one who saves, who rejoices over them and who quiets them by your love. Over all their decisions, may they trust in and acknowledge you, Lord, and not lean on their own understanding. Over all their influence, may they do everything in love, Lord, as you have loved them. Over all their trials, may they be strong and courageous, remembering that you go with them and will not leave or forsake them. You are their refuge and fortress. Over all their triumphs, may they always give thanks to you, Lord, who gives victory through Christ Jesus. Through every day, Lord, may they remember the privilege of an education as they dwell in your shelter and rest in your shadow. For you are the almighty God, and your word stands forever. Amen. Okay, let's have all our students up here with me, please. Join me, students. Come, come, come. Yeah. Um, Debbie, I believe you're a student. Yeah. Come on up, students. Come on, Lewis. Who's anyone hiding from me here? We're going to pray together. Let's see. Ev see, this is an amazing group of individuals with all the potential that's represented here. Come on, Lem. Come on, buddy. Come on. Atta boy. Yeah, we're going to pray for them today. Let's pray. Would you stretch out a hand if you don't mind and just join me in prayer today? God, I thank you for this group of people that are gathered here with me. Wow. I'm so proud of them, Lord. And I'm so excited for what you want to do in their lives, Lord. I'm so excited for all the potential that's here that you're forming them and teaching them and leading them, God. And I pray that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would guard their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We pray your protection over them today, God. Not only physically, but God, I pray your protection over their hearts, over their minds, God. I pray, Lord, for the teachers that will speak into their life, God. I pray, Lord, that you will filter out any lies that don't need to be received into their souls, Lord. I pray that you would help them to be a shining light to all who come to know them and see them, Lord. That they will be influencers here in the city of Edmonton. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. If you are under the age of 12, stay here. Amen. Everyone else may go. I have something for you. Although I think some over 12s might want one too. Okay, guys. Uh, Pastor Mike, uh, you have a, a, a sheet that you want to give them to? Okay, guys. I don't want to find the garbage on the floor. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, where's your sister? Where, where is she? There she comes. Look, here she comes. And your other sister, yes, I know. You have a, a growing family. Yes. For who? For, oh, Levi, yeah, absolutely. She's looking after her brother. Oh, there, he's right there beside you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Yes. Did uh, everyone get one? 
that needed one? Yes, we're good? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a very exciting day, and I think if you noticed this morning when you walked in, there are several people here today who are our guests who've come for a very special reason, and that is the water baptism that's going to take place at the end of the service. I'm going to be, be brief in my sermon today. Uh, for those candidates who are going to be baptized and getting into the water and getting wet, um, uh, we will be having a song at the close of the sermon. Uh, if you do need to still change, like me, um, take that time quickly to change into any clothes that you're wearing for the water baptism, and then maybe be ready to join me here at the front. Uh, yeah. I love water baptism. We're going to be having another one later in September uh, because there's several students. Um, last, last baptism service, we met some students from the university campus that Alex has been working with, and there are more returning to school this year that indicated they would like to get baptized this fall. So this is wonderful, very wonderful. Yeah, I love it. I I. I would fill the tank every Sunday if somebody wants to get baptized. So just come see me and uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, this summer we've been working through a sermon series. And I am not ready to let go of summer, by the way. I know that the leaves in the river valley are starting to turn their color. I don't know what's with that. But um, I think it's even warm enough in here, Pastor Mike. You could probably put the fan on. Could be me, but um, yeah, I'll just keep the air moving. Uh, it's still summer. See, we're going to have a beautiful fall, but it's still summer. And I want to continue a little bit more in the series Following Jesus. Um, we've looked at a number of biblical examples of faithful followers of Christ. Um, we looked at them to say, what can we learn from these biblical examples for our own lives in how we can be followers of Jesus? We've also looked at events in the earthly life of Jesus as he ministered here on earth. And we learn from him, of course, always, of how we can better walk in his footprints, in the footsteps that he lays for us. Um, two weeks ago, my sermon was called Stormy Waters. The disciples learned that sometimes being with Jesus means sailing into a storm. In the midst of the wind and the waves beating against their vessel, fear became their biggest problem. You remember what Jesus said to them? If you were at one of our uh, um, day camps, uh, we had a memory verse that I hope we never forget when Jesus says to them, don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I'm here. Jesus reminds us in the midst of the storm, we don't have to be afraid. In fact, he even questions, where is our faith? In the midst of the storm when we are panicking and fear begins to grip our hearts so that we can't even think, he's here saying, why are you afraid? Where is your faith? Uh, the disciples forgot that right in the boat with them was the one who controlled the elements, the one who was the master over the storm. And Jesus calmed the winds. He, he quieted the seas. And the disciples were in awe and said, who is this that even the wind and the sea obeys him? At his command, at his command, peace reigned. Today I want us to go a little further and talk about what happens when the storm means your vessel breaks up and you become shipwrecked. In fact, that's the title of my sermon today, Shipwrecked. We're going to watch a quick video that I know the children will enjoy and maybe us too. Thank you. 
Paul was a prisoner at Caesarea. He had asked to see Caesar about his case. Caesar was the leader of the Roman Empire. So Paul got in a ship with other prisoners going to Rome. The journey was difficult. Strong winds and rain tossed the ship. The crew threw things overboard and tried to keep the ship from breaking apart. But the storm did not stop for many days. All the people on the ship were afraid they would die. One night, God sent an angel to Paul. The angel told Paul to not be afraid. God would save the lives of everyone on the ship. Paul told everyone on board what God had said. Take courage, he said. Paul believed everything would happen just like God said. The people on the ship would not die. They would have to run the ship onto an island. When the ship got close to an island, some of the sailors tried to escape in the lifeboat. Paul told them they would only be saved if they stayed on the ship. The sailors listened to Paul. Ah. No one had eaten in a long time, so Paul told them to eat. He thanked God and broke the bread, and everyone ate. Then they raised the sails and headed toward the island. When they got close, the ship struck a sandbar and stopped. The waves crashed into the ship, and it began to break into pieces. The soldiers were afraid the prisoners would escape, so some of them wanted to kill the prisoners. But an army officer ordered everyone to swim for shore. Those who could not swim clung to the planks and pieces of the ship. They all made it safely to shore. Paul was right. God saved all of their lives. Paul, an apostle. Apostle means sent one, which when we look at the scriptures, we realize that we are all sent ones because if you remember, one of Jesus' last instructions was go, which means we're sent. Go into all the world and speak the gospel to everyone. Paul, an apostle for Jesus, had many, many perilous moments before this shipwreck. He uh, is an amazing example for us as a follower of Christ. And we have all of the letters, many of the letters that he wrote to the churches. In fact, he helped to plant many of the churches that he wrote letters to later on. So we have so much from him and his commitment to being a follower of Christ. Ever ask yourself, what would happen if Paul said, okay, it's enough, me being shipwrecked, that's the final straw, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired. I want to give up. What would have happened? Uh, but Jesus had to work for him. 2 Corinthians 11. There's some scriptures I want to look at this morning where Paul actually lists off many of the things that happened to him as a follower of Christ. Now, I'm not telling you the list to scare you into not wanting to follow Jesus. What I'm saying is Jesus is big enough to lead us through everything. He says this, in labors more abundant, in stripes, that's in being whipped above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. In this journey, this particular journey now, Paul is on his way to Rome because he's been accused by the Jewish religious leaders of the day. They're, they're not happy with the growth of the followers of Jesus. They're not happy that Paul, who used to be one of them, a religious leader, a Pharisee, 
they're not happy that he's now become a follower of Jesus. And now, not only has he become a follower of Jesus, but he's taken this news about Jesus beyond the Jewish family and taken it to the non-Jews. And he's taken to planting churches that worship Jesus all over the known world. And they are now accusing him of many things within their belief system. And so in the accusation, they, they, they widen the charge to that he is seditious, that he is working against Caesar, that he is telling people to worship someone and that this person is king not Caesar. So they're using the gospel against him to get him trouble with Rome. So Paul is a Roman citizen. Not only is he a Jewish male, but he is a citizen of Rome. And because of that, he has rights that cannot be trampled on. And so in his being brought up on these charges, he does what every Roman citizen has the right to do. He appeals to Caesar. Having appealed to Caesar, now he must go to Caesar, where he will wait for an audience to be able to speak to Caesar. Now, Paul, in fact, wants to speak to Caesar because he wants to speak about Jesus to Caesar. Uh, I sometimes try to think about the equivalent for us here in Canada. We don't have a Caesar. We have a prime minister. We have a premier. Can you imagine getting in trouble just so you could have an audience with uh, uh, Trudeau? I'm not sure that would work in Canada. But the Roman government had it so that any citizen could appeal to Caesar. So Paul is sent on this journey as a prisoner, but not as a condemned prisoner. Notice the difference. He's given rights and freedoms that other prisoners on the ship don't have. Uh, he is allowed to see his friends. When the ship docks at different places, he's allowed to get off and go see other people that he knows and spend time with them, even though he does have a guard assigned to him. Paul is not a condemned prisoner. He's actually someone who's going to stand trial. So he hasn't been found guilty, which is why he has these freedoms. He also enjoys favor that I believe came from God um, with the man who is his guard. Um, he, he's interested in Paul and hears a lot that he has to say. Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, is a traveling companion of Paul. And if you look at chapters 27 and 28, in fact, read the whole book of Acts, I would encourage you to do. But specifically in chapters 27 and 28, uh, Luke writes from uh, first person. He talks about we, we embarked on this journey. We, joined, we got on this ship and he names the ship. He, in fact, there's so much detail about this journey uh, unlike a lot of other things that we find recorded in the history of the church, this journey, he has detailed it. He has journaled. And he, why do we have so much detail, right? Because he wants us to know it happened. <coughs> Excuse me. This is when my husband jumps up and gives me a lawsuit. He's not here. <coughs> a fisherman friend would be great right now. I'm a friend of fishermen too. Thank you. Oh, it's the right flavor too. How many, how many of you are old enough to remember the TV show Gilligan's Island? <coughs> Some of you are young, but you watched the reruns. 
I remember the song at the beginning. Uh, it says, the weather started getting rough. Remember the tiny ship? Yeah, it was tossed. If not for the spirit of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost, right? So <coughs> whenever I read the story of Paul's shipwreck, I can't help but remember Gilligan's Island and, and the crew and the, the storm. And when I was a kid, I hadn't been out on the, the ocean very much at that point when this show was first aired. And, and uh, watching it, I think probably started watching it on black and white TV initially. Uh, just watching this, this boat and being tossed by the waves and the wind and everything. It was the closest I had to imagining what it must have been like for Paul when he was in this storm in the, I believe, the Mediterranean area, right? So, uh, okay, I have to admit the Gilligan's Island song came to mind while I was doing the sermon. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the storm, Paul receives a word from God. He's, in fact, visited by an angel. Acts 27, 23 to 26 says this. There stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. He's, he's, relaying, he's relaying to the crew and to the passengers what he experienced. He says, the angel said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. First of all, he says, the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. That's Paul's confession and his identifying himself before everyone on that ship. This is, this is who I am. I belong to my God. Everyone on that ship at that time, people were extremely religious and worshipped many gods. Many of the people that were uh, Gentiles on that ship would have been praying to their gods. But it was different in that <clears throat> they were seeing their gods serving them. We pray to the gods to take care of us. Paul says, the God to whom I belong and to whom I serve. He makes the distinction. I am his servant. I'm here not representing myself. I'm here representing the God whom I serve. This is who I am. This is my life's purpose. Secondly, in that, in that retelling, he says, I believe God. He doesn't say, listen, I believe in God. But he says, I believe God. Another faith statement that we should take note of. I believe God. In 2 Timothy 2, 8 to 12, this is a letter that Paul has written to Timothy. He calls him his son in the faith. He says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. I have to stop there and just for a moment. Do you feel called this morning? Do you understand that he calls us according to his purpose? We have received a calling to be his own family. He's called us, not according to our works. There's nothing that any of us have done that makes us worthy of this calling. As talented as you all are, as amazingly beautiful and handsome as you all are, absolutely, pat yourself on the back if you want. But understand, it's not anything that you have done. We have been called according to his own purpose and his grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death 
and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him against that day. When Paul stands up and he says, I believe God, that he's able to perform everything he says. He's not kidding. It's not just a raw, raw speech. He has demonstrated his belief with his very life. That's why he's on the ship. He's not out for a holiday cruise. He's not out to fish for salmon. He's on that journey simply to follow God's purpose. Paul knew who he was trusting. He knew whom he believed, and he wanted others to know this Jesus. He gave people hope to hold on to in the midst of an impossible situation. When you're going through an, what seems like an impossible situation, when you are in the midst of the storm and you know that you're going to be shipwrecked because that's what he's told, the ship's going to run aground. Are you the one giving comfort and encouraging others? Or are you the one saying, somebody needs to look at me right now. I'm suffering. I need something. I need some help. Or are you looking to say, wait a minute, I believe God. Everybody's suffering with me. Everybody that's going through this storm with me, I believe God that he is able to deliver us, that he is able to help us. He said, we must run aground on a certain island. Paul knew they were going to be shipwrecked. He just didn't know where. You notice God doesn't give him further information. Paul must walk by faith. He must be in that same mode that you and I do when we don't know what's coming. We don't know what's around the corner. But we walk by faith and not by the sight of our eyes. Not by what's written in the paper uh, about whatever's going on in our lives. It is by faith that we approach tomorrow, today, the day after, as long as God gives us breath in our lungs. Paul had assurance that he would survive. He, he was given that word, but he had to walk in faith. God didn't share everything with Paul, just like you and I. For Paul, it was a faith journey. That means we need to understand something. We too may be shipwrecked. Maybe not literally, physically, next time you step into a boat going, oh, I hope this isn't one of the times Pastor Debbie was talking about that I'm going to be shipwrecked. No. I'm saying sometimes our life journey may seem like a shipwreck. It may seem like things are not going as we planned. In Acts 27, 41, it says this, but striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the prow stuck fast and remained immovable. But the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. I think about Paul in those moments. As the ship begins to break up, even though God has prepared him and said, this is going to happen, Paul, but I'm going to make sure you and everyone with you is going to be saved alive. When that ship starts to break up, when the stern starts to break, and the creaking and the groaning of those old wooden ships must have been quite a sound as, as it would begin to break up, those huge timbers breaking with the power of the sea and the sand. I'm thinking Paul is looking down at the water, getting ready to plunge in, and he's thinking, this is what I'd be thinking because I say it to myself all the time, he who dwells, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my strength, my refuge, my God in whom I trust. Those are ancient scriptures from days of old. And Paul would have known them and be brought up with those words. Those same words that you and I have available to us today from the scriptures. 
He who lives in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Perhaps he quoted to himself this verse from Isaiah. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Israel, the one who formed you, says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. And the flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In Acts 27, as the story continues, it says, The centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose. The other guards, knowing the Roman rule, if you were a Roman centurion, if you were guarding a prisoner and you lost your prisoner, you forfeited your life. Either you die in the sea or you're going to die when you have to report back to your commander. You don't lose your prisoner. So they wanted to kill the prisoner so they couldn't be lost. Therefore, they were trying to save their own lives. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. So it was that they all escaped safely to land. <laughs> Shipwrecked. When we reach Acts chapter 28, which is the story of being shipwrecked, I think we see Romans 8, 28 in action. Romans 8, 28 says this. And do we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose? Where is this Jesus when we're shipwrecked? When our life seems to be falling apart, when nothing we expect to be happening is happening. Instead, things that we would never have looked for to happen are going on. When life seems to be overwhelming us and it seems like it's falling apart. When it feels like everything is wrong. I want to say this. Get ready. Because God's about to move. Get ready. God's going to do something. I don't know how many times I've encouraged people going through a difficult time when it seems like they're being attacked on every side. I'm like, okay, there's a reason for this. So get ready for what God wants to do. The island they ship were shipwrecked on is the island of Malta. It's 27 kilometers long by 14.5 kilometers wide. Equals about 246 square kilometers. Not a huge island. A little bit bigger than the Isle of Patmos, where John was sent to live for quite a while. Not much, but a little. The first thing that happens for Paul after getting himself up from the sand, uh, they're welcomed by people on the island, but they're cold and they're wet, and they are making fire to dry off. And he is picking up wood for the fire, and underneath the piece of wood that he picks up is a scorpion, which basically uh, bites him, but clings onto his hand. And the people of the island see this, and they, to them it is an omen. Very suspicious people. They see the scorpion, and they say to themselves, oh, this man must be a prisoner worthy of death, and even though he escaped the sea, now... I guess you could use the word karma. Karma is going to see that he gets what's coming to him. What does Paul do? Paul shakes it off and continues to make a fire and get dried off. But he's being observed. He's being watched. They're watching. They're waiting for his hand to swell up. They're waiting for the pain to start. They're waiting for him to keel over from the poison of the scorpion. That doesn't happen. But I think... It's important for us to understand something. You're being watched. You're being observed. 
when you step into a new situa situation, when you walk into a new room, a new group of people, and you identify yourself like Paul did, I believe God, understand you're being observed. People are watching you. What are you made of? Are you for real? I was talking with a good friend yesterday. We had lunch together. We don't see each other too often. She doesn't live here in Edmonton anymore. She was telling me about a situation within her family and uh, about how she had to attend a function without her husband. And uh, many of her family were not believers like she and her husband are. And she went to do something and was challenged immediately by people that said, um, are you only doing this because your husband's not here? In fact, what she went to get was a glass of wine from the bar. And she was immediately challenged by, well, you're a Christian. Are you, are you gonna, you're drinking because your husband's not here to see you drink. And she was taken aback because she was like, why does even anyone even notice me in all of the people that are here? Why are they noticing me? But she, she was challenged, questioned, and uh, she ended up coming away from that very shaken in that she hadn't realized how much she was being observed and watched by members of her extended family, that they were just keeping watch over her life. When Paul didn't keel over dead, the same superstitious people decided, oh, he must be a god. If he didn't die from the scorpion, he must, he's not a murderer, so he doesn't deserve death. He must be a god. And because of that, they begin to, to look for how he could serve them. And he's quickly invited to the, the leading citizen of the island. His father is ill, and he's dying, and there's nothing that can help him. So they invite Paul to come. And, of course, Paul comes and prays, and the man is healed. What next happens is then other people who are sick and need help, now they're coming to Paul. And basically in the three months that he is stranded on the island of Malta, waiting for a new ship to come and get everybody, waiting for a way off, he ends up ministering and teaching people about Jesus those three months. There was no one else on the island there was no believer that had come there with the gospel before. There's this song that says, I'm waiting, I'm waiting on you, Lord. I'm hopeful, I'm waiting on you, Lord. Though it is painful, but patiently I will wait. And I will move ahead bold and confident, taking every step in obedience. While I'm waiting, I will serve you. While I'm waiting, I will worship you. While I'm waiting, I will not faint. I'll be running the race even while I wait. I'm waiting on you, Lord, and I'm peaceful. I'm waiting on you, Lord, and though it's not easy, faithfully, I will wait. I'll move ahead bold and confident, taking every step in obedience. While I'm waiting, I will serve you. When you're shipwrecked, when you're stuck on an island and can't get off, what are you going to do? How are you going to be? Pray. <laughs> yeah, that's good, Mark. While you're waiting, serve him. Serve him while you're waiting. Be confident in your God. If you're shipwrecked, it's because he has something for you there. He's got a work for you to do. I'm asking our team to lead us in a closing song, not closing as in don't leave, but this is our signal to our candidates to get ready. We're going to quickly just change the scene slightly and uh, exciting to have this baptism service.
sing all praise. So you just bow your heads and your hearts with me as we prepare just to, to change the order of the service before we do this. I think it's important. If you're here today and you've heard something that has struck a chord with you, maybe you came in today and that word shipwrecked seems to describe what you're going through right now. Maybe you're just still in the storm. I want to pray for you. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor Debbie, 
I, I want to lay my life down before him today. I, I need help. I need to know that he's with me in the storm. With every head bowed, no one's just looking around. I'm just going to invite you to raise your hand so I can pray for you today. That's you. I see some hands going up. I see some more hands going up. Absolutely, I want to pray, yes. Yeah, I see those hands. Yeah, you can put them down. Anyone else before we pray? It says, pray for me. Um, I'm in the storm. I'm, I feel kind of wrecked, but I'm looking for Jesus to help me. Yes, absolutely. Pray for you. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you for your promise. Because you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You said that you would be with us always. And I pray for each individual as they raise their hand today. I ask, minister to them by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. I, I pray that as they choose to come alongside and walk with you, Lord, they would feel your strength, feel your love overwhelming them, that they are not alone, that you have a plan, that you have a purpose, that they are not forgotten. And so we pray over each person now in the name of of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, we got to switch a few things out here. Give us a minute. after church it's quite warm today as opposed to when it's been so cold making up for it uh, joining me in the tank is pastor Jesse today he is not getting baptized he has already been baptized but he is going to be baptizing his youngest sister so Juliet would you come and join us? We've been looking forward to this for some time. Yeah. Hi, 
Sweetie. Okay, Pastor Jesse, walk us through. You're in charge. No, don't hold the mic in the baptism thing. First rule. So, this is Juliet. Hi. <laughs> Tell us why you want to get baptized, Juliet. Um, to, to build my faith in Jesus and God. I believe that you have a verse that you've memorized. Yes. Yes. Are you ready to say that verse before everyone? <laughs> all you that are righteous shall for joy for the Lord is done. Praise him, all you that obey him. Give thanks to him with harps and sing to him with stringed instruments. Sing a new song to him, play the harpist skill, and shout for joy. The words of the Lord are true, and all his works are dependable. The Lord loves and is righteous and just. His constant love fills the earth. The Lord created the heavens by his command, the sun, moon, and stars by his spoken word. The Lord gathered all the seas into one place. He shut up the ocean depths into storms. When he worshiped the Lord, all the earth honor him, all peoples of the world. When he spoke, the world was created. At his command, everything appeared. The Lord frustrates the purpose of the nations. He keeps them from carrying out their plans. But his plans endure forever. His purposes last eternally. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From where he rules, he looks down on all who li live on earth. He forms all their thoughts and knows everything they do. king does not win because of his powerful army. A soldier does not triumph because of his strength. War horses are useless for victory. Their great strength cannot save. The, the Lord watches over those who obey him, those who trust in his constant love. He saves them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our protector and our help. We are glad because of him. We trust in his holy name. May our constant love be with us, Lord, as we put our hope in you. Psalms 33. So Juliet memorized that verse. Chapter. That chapter. <laughs> Many verses. Many verses. Um as a way to prepare herself and as a way to make sure that she was ready to commit to following Christ publicly by committing to hide his word in her heart. Amen. That was wonderful, Juliet. I'm so proud of you. Very, very strong in you. Can you ask Daddy to come up here? Yeah. So, uh, Daddy, there's a microphone there. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you for this special moment in Juliet's life, where she has publicly declared that you are her God, and Lord, and that she will follow you for the rest of her life. Lord God, I just ask that you keep her in your hand forever. Lord God, I just pray that she does not turn to the left nor to the right, Lord God, but that she follows you all the days of her life. May you walk with her and show her your will. Just guide her, Lord God, in your name. Amen. Amen.
Christ as your personal Savior? Yes? And you commit to following him in his ways? Okay, well, so now, Julia, upon your public declaration of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. next assistant and uh, following him into the water is Dallas. Hey, Dallas! You can just leave your towel there by my water girl. Come on in sweetie. Oh turn around, turn around, turn around. Oh, this this is Dallas. Another one we have known since babyhood, <laughs> right? And we're so excited that you're here today and that you made this decision. Would you like to just tell everyone a little bit about this decision you've made today? Why you want to get baptized? I want to get baptized for when Jesus rose down and then he rose up. So she's identifying with Christ. When he was crucified, he was buried, and then he rose again. And the, the baptism is a symbol of that. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, right? Yes. And do you love Jesus? Yes. Have you invited him into your heart? Yes. Yeah, so you want to follow him? Yes. Excellent. I think that your daddy is here, and he's going to come and share scripture with us. Just I asked him if he would speak a scripture like we talked about. Uh, you might, if it says mute, just look on the little readout and just, Catherine will help you. Dallas, we're so excited for you, for what the Lord has in store for your life, how a beautiful heart you have. I share today from Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. And now we're going to ask Dallas' mommy to come and pray. I was actually wondering if uh, Shauna also wanted to come up because she's also Dal's mom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Dallas, um, thanks for letting us be here today and share your day. I'm really proud of you, kiddo. Dear Lord, Give Dallas the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to go forth in your name, mm -hmm. to recognize that she's choosing this path on her own free will. Give her the strength that even when sometimes she might struggle or she might try occasionally veer off the path, give her the strength and the wisdom to come back. Mm -hmm. And everyone who's shown up here today together to support her, to witness this. Yes. Help them to give her the best words to keep her on that path, yes. to show Absolutely. her the love that each and every one of you has in your hearts for Jesus, for our Father, and to give her all of the wisdom to go forth and spread your light and your love mm -hmm. to each and every person she follows in her path. Amen. Light is such a good word to describe this little girl. She just brightens the rooms with her smile, with her kind heart. We recognize that in you. And that comes from Jesus living in you. He's a big light inside of you and just makes everyone see brightness. And 
we are all here for you too, right? Yeah. Amen. Ready to do this? Okay. You want to come in too? Amen. 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 Amen.